All right. Our next guest speaker is Sheikh Antisar Salim Al Ali Sabah. Sheikh Antisar Salim Al Ali Sabah is the founder of a unique publishing house named Lulwa, another dear name, my sister. <laughs> she is a citizen of an awesome country and a woman humbled by the accomplishment of her beloved Kuwait and its ever evolving people. Sheikh Antisar Al Sabah is a mother of four children. I'm a father of two. And a, and a granddaughter of a brilliantly empowering grandmother. Let's welcome Sheikh Ansar. Um, thank you for not making me after Sleiman. <laughs> He's too articulate. Um, Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss and, and the universe will put doors where there were walls. And basically that's my story and that's a story I want to tell everyone here. My story started, um, I was working, I was doing a nine to five job in a manufacturing company. I was doing well. I thought I was happy, but I was itching for something more. This is not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And um, on my dying bed, I didn't want to say that's what I did. So I had an idea. There was a magazine that I used to read for a long time, many years. And um, it was in English and French. And um, I thought, it would be great to bring that to the Arab world. It's a magazine that has a lot of psychology, a lot of self-help, a lot of... Um, Articles and subjects that helped me in my life, helped me get over a lot of obstacles in my life. And I thought that would be awesome to bring it to the Arab world, especially to um, Arabs that are not bilingual. It took me a year to uh, gain the gut to go and actually contact the, the publishers. And uh, they are actually one of the biggest publishers in the world. Well, I actually eventually went there. And I spoke to them, and I told them why I wanted to do it and all of that. And they said, okay, so what's your plan? I said, give me six months. I'll give you a plan. Six months after that, I had the company going. Lulwa, why Lulwa? For a long time, we sat there trying to think of a name. All the inspirational names and all the nice names and all the best names were taken so one day i sat after like two months of trying to find a name i sat there and i started thinking what inspired me who made me who i am i'm one of seven girls why am i different hmm. okay and i remembered my grandmother I actually lived for my, with my grandmother for the first seven years of my life, my formative, formative years, and she was a strong woman. She was a Kuwaiti. Everyone was careful around her. And her name was Lulwa. She was strong, yet she was just. And what I loved is she never gossiped behind anyone. She said it straight to their face. I never heard her say anything bad about anyone behind their face. She didn't like them, they knew. I like that name. So Lulwa, the fact that a pearl is made from something that pains the oyster, that's even a better name. So from pain comes something of beauty. Perfect name. And the perfection was no one had taken it. So it started. And the ball started rolling from there. We have a few publications coming, a few magazines, one, a couple of magazines coming, but that's not why I'm speaking today. So I started looking around and people, as uh, Hassa said, were frustrated, were feeling down, were feeling uninspired. And I thought, why do I not feel that? I feel great, I feel everything can be done. And I realize it's because I know a lot of inspiring people. I know a lot of people who make me get up in the morning and think, oh, Kuwait's great. So 
The next thought came, why don't we show Kuwaitis the inspiration that they have that they don't see? So we have a fantastic book coming out, which is about inspiring people. But before we talk about that, we also are working on another book. It's about, it's like a mini encyclopedia about Kuwait, and it's called My Kuwait. And since most people don't read, we're not here to change people's cultures. We will work, talk to them in their language. So it's going to be little, little pieces of information with colors and numbers and something very enjoyable to read about Kuwait. And that started because my favorite place in the world is always bookshops. I went to Kunokanaya in Dubai. I found books about all the Gulf states, except Kuwait. Strange. Why? Well, we have lots of beautiful, not lots of beautiful, lots of books that have content, very good content in Kuwait. But in reality, they're ugly to look at because they've got so much content, yes, they, they don't look good. They're, they're printed, not, the printing's not so good, and there's too much information. People don't want too much information. They just want to know a little bit about everything. So we thought, we'll make a book that's worthy of Kunokanaya. We'll make a book that sits next to the books about all the other Gulf states, and actually will surpass them. And one, some of the interesting things I found out when I was reading about Kuwait and trying to find out things about Kuwait was, we've had, we have an, a fantastic history in Kuwait. Does any no one know that the greatest pirate in the Gulf was Kuwaiti? Of all things, he was Kuwaiti born. This one? Oh, Rahama bin Jabir al-Jalahma, born in Kuwait, Kuwait's arch enemy. If you want to think of a Kuwaiti side. From the other side, he's valiant, he's a warrior, he's everything. Kuwaitis, we don't like him. He attacked our ships. But, Rahama bin Jabir, born in Kuwait, we do produce a lot of people. We produce queens, we produce dancers, we produce singers. Kuwait produces everything. In another 20 years, we don't know what we'll produce. Well, we, I also found out um, a lot of interesting things. A lot of things done in Kuwait are done by the people of Kuwait. First school, which is celebrated 100 years, is by the people of Kuwait. Things are not always done by the government. Most, most things are done by the Kuwaitis, for Kuwait. And that is the strength of Kuwait. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about the book we're working on, which is Inspirational People.